Kate and Travel. And uh, what my company does is that we help people plan for their bucket list travel to the world. So with that said, um, I do anything from planning to helping you answer your questions. And uh, the best thing I do is basically match you with the right uh, uh, vacations to make sure that it's stress-free before you head out there. That's the best way to reach me is basically just Google me up. You'll find me there. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Thanks. Hi there, everybody. My name is Gary Armstrong. I'm the G Adventures Global Purpose Specialist for Alberta, as well as Eastern and Northern Ontario. Um, really excited to have the opportunity to share with you the passion that we have at G Adventures for travel, the opportunity to visit the far flung parts of the world that you've always dreamed of going and seeing, to have culturally immersive experiences in those destinations, to learn what life is like for the people in those places, to experience their culture, their food and their way of life, and bring back those positive experiences and changes so that they can work and impact your life here in Canada as well. So I uh, thank you so much for um, you know, tuning into this, this, uh, this, this presentation. And if there's any more questions that you have about G Adventures, please contact your local uh, travel agent so that they can provide you with more information on, on everything that we're doing at G um, to, to be sustainable, but also to help mitigate, mitigate the risks and impacts of this current global health crisis. Thank you so much. It's the Cape and Travel Show on the Travel Channel, only on TVU, with your host, Wendy Sung. How are you doing, Wendy? Great, James. Nice to see you again. That's awesome. It is good. It is good. What's going on today? Uh, I'm very excited to have uh, one of our uh, suppliers, partners uh, from G Adventures. And uh, I was fortunate to get Gary Armstrong to basically do some uh, you know, Q&A and some basically uh, getting us ready to think about uh, planning towards a uh, trip somehow in the future. So yeah, welcome, Gary. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi there. Hi, Wendy. Hi, James. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, Gary, uh, please uh, share with us uh, who you are and how you got started with G Adventures and why you're so excited working with G Adventures and what are some of the exciting things happening going forward? Yeah, so um, yeah, my name's Gary. I'm the G Adventures Global Purpose Specialist for Eastern and Northern Ontario, as well as Alberta. Uh, I just moved to Ontario in uh, December of last year. I was living in Alberta the last 12 years and was the GPS there for the last three. So I work really closely with our agency partners um, to ensure that you know, when you go and you talk to your travel agent, you're able to, um, yeah, that they're able to convey to you exactly what it is that we do at Gene Ventures. Um, and my, my role is to help our agency partners find more passion, purpose, and happiness in their roles. So the travel industry is always exciting. Um, now it's, it's, it's interesting as well as exciting. Um, but yeah, looking forward to uh, talking about what we're doing at Gene Ventures right now. Sounds good. Um, I, I guess uh, most people may or may not have heard of G Adventures. Can I kind of share with us, um, you know, how we got started and, um, you know, what are the core values of G Adventures? Yeah, so G Adventures, yeah. we've been um, uh, operating for 30 years. So uh, Bruce Kuntip founded the company in 1990. Uh, he grew up in Calgary as well. He moved to Toronto in the, uh, in the late 80s to, to found his business. And he founded it on this idea that travel and tourism can be a force for good that the travel industry can be a fantastic mechanism for wealth redistribution, that it takes some of the wealthiest people in the wealthiest countries in the world to visit the poorest people in the poorest countries. So why can't more of the money that people spend on travel, why can't that stay in local destinations and, and lead to positive outcomes for people there? So that's the ethos of the company uh, that was founded. Uh, there's a number of different mechanisms that we do to ensure that, uh, that we operate to make sure that that we are economically sustainable, uh, socially sustainable, and environmentally sustainable as a business. Um, the core values of the company uh, also kind of underpin everything that we do as a business. We love changing people's lives. It's what we do. It's that transformative power of travel, um, that opportunity to go and um, you know experience a culture, visit a place, learn about its people, its history, try the food. Um, and that changes your life, but it can also change the lives of the people in that destination as well uh, through the positive economic impact that you're having there. Wow, what, very well said, very well said. Um, um, maybe, maybe another thing to talk about is um, what, are, what are some of the top, I guess, destinations that Canadians are looking forward to? And what do you think, so, what do you think things are going to start to open up again and that Canadians will feel a bit more comfortable of traveling afar? Yeah, the first question is the easy one. The second question, there's more uncertainty. So uh, with the first question, 
places relatively close to home, uh, Peru, Central and South America is, um, you know, it's, 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 we've been operating in that region for a very long time. Specifically Peru, we're the largest operator on the Inca Trail. A third of everybody who hikes the Inca Trail uh, hikes it with G Adventures. We're recognized as the best operator there. Um, it, they are struggling, like many nations, with the impacts of this, this COVID-19 virus. Um, you know, Galapagos is another region where we have a lot of travelers looking to go. Um, we, we operate over 600 tours on all seven continents. So, we, you know, if there's a part of the world you want to go visit, there's a good chance there's a, a gene adventures trip to go that, that will take you there. As far as the current, um, you know, global health crisis, um, it's very difficult to see. Um, it's, it's an unpredictable future. You know, many countries have dealt exceptionally well with mitigating the spread of this virus and other countries have, um, you know, not been as effective in, in preventing transmission. So, um, you know, again, a lot of those destinations where we have a lot of demand for places like uh, Costa Rica, Vietnam, um, you know, the Antipodean countries, Australia, New Zealand, there's, there's a lot of places that have really excelled at uh, Japan at, at, at kind of um, stemming the, the tide of this virus. The, the hope is that that continues, that those destinations are able to maintain that and uh, slowly open up to allow the rest of the world to come visit in a safe way. Um, as, I mean, we're making changes as an organization. The goal is always to, uh, yeah, safety is always the number one priority. Um, working as an adventure travel company, I mean, I get that question all the time. Is it safe? Is it safe to go to Colombia? Is it safe to go to Iran? Is it safe to go right. to whatever destination it is? Um, right. And the answer is always yes, because we do not operate as a business in a destination if it is not safe for us to do so. There are new challenges posed by, um, you know, this, this new virus but we're, we're being proactive in, in taking steps to get people comfortable so that when borders open up, when it is safe to do so, we can make sure that we're um, you know, helping to solve that problem domestically as well as yeah, internationally. That sounds good. I know that everybody's ready to kind of get going. And uh, I know I, I've been asked this question too. I mean, just, just kind of arbitrarily pick, uh, I guess, a, a period of time frame for people to kind of plan towards. Um, you know, are people, would, would it be safe to say that G Avengers will be, you know, looking to have more flexibility and booking into more next year and of this year, you know, like how far can we kind of anticipate of planning? Um, yeah, so I mean, the, the, the key there is flexibility. So ensuring that um, we're able to be nimble in responding to the, the, the way that things change over time. So um, we have our book with confidence. It means that if you want to book a trip, you, you know, uh, um, you know, until the end of this year. So if you're looking for uh, October, November, December of 2020, you want to go and travel, then you have the opportunity to book that trip and make changes up to 14 days prior to that trip um, so that you can then uh, move that departure date, you know, for a year in advance or two years in advance. If for some reason um, we don't see the trajectory that we need to be able to operate trips. So, you know, you, you, you book that great vacation, you want to go to Costa Rica in November, um, but, you know, what if the airlines, you know, still aren't able to operate and get you there? Right. Then obviously we're going to enable you to then move that, um, that booking. And, you know, the hope is that we're on a, a good trajectory, that um, everything works out, but we need to provide that flexibility to travelers so that um, should different destinations open up at different times or should they be able to open but then have to make changes and bring in right. more restrictions, then, you know, we're not, our travelers are able to also meet that, that demand for flexibility. Very great. Um, I guess my, my other question would be there, uh, there has been so many, uh, I guess, um, um, Canadians being told they can go to some places, they've got the cancellation of uh, last minute cancellation, you know, some of them are getting vouchers, some of them will get actual real refunds. I know that even before this COVID situation, uh, our G Adventure has had this policy of having a lifetime uh, deposit that which is great uh, not many companies do that um, other than a lifetime deposit uh, with let's say if I was to book through something for next year um, you know would I be looking for a refund 14 days later or is it kind of moving towards getting vouchers or how, 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 how is yeah. that? So our lifetime deposits have always been in place um, uh, what it is is that you know to hold your space on a trip you give us uh, usually a $350 deposit to hold that space Final payment is due 60 days prior to departure. So, um, you know, you book your trip, it's, it's months in advance, and you're just putting down that $350. It is non-refundable, but it is 100% transferable, and it's kept on file for life, thus lifetime deposit. So if you book that trip and you cancel or move it more than 60 days prior, 
then um, you know, there's 100% flexibility with that. You can do a name change on the lifetime deposit, give it to a family member or a friend. Nice. Um, it's, it's very flexible. Uh, right. With the terms and conditions, you know, once you've made the final payment at 60 days out, um, with our book with confidence, if it's a trip for this year, then uh, up to 14 days prior, you can uh, make a change and postpone that trip. Um, if it's a departure from January until the end of May next year, then it's 30 days prior to, to departure, you're able to make a change, postpone that trip. Um, and so that, that gives that, that increased flexibility. Sounds great, sounds great. Um, Gary, every time I speak with, uh, speak with you, you're always as excited to talk about travel. I mean, um, I, I would like to kind of see what kind of travel styles uh, do you venture uh, providers and uh, maybe share a little bit more about your sustainability and uh, just being uh, um, um, responsible travel. Like, I, I think people need to hear more about that nowadays with, um, you know, travel yeah. when you get there, right? It is the great opportunity of this crisis is that um, the whole travel industry has been reset. So everybody's at zero. And, and to listen to our founder, Bruce, talk about the opportunity that, that presents is that there was a lot of crazy things going on in travel that might not necessarily have been the, the best things to be doing, but it was just so fast paced and so much change and so much demand that, um, you know, this, this is a really, uh, it's, it's an opportunity to slow down, to stop and to think about the impacts that travel and tourism are having and work effectively as an industry to mitigate those impacts and ensure that, that travel is more sustainable in the long run. So right. that's always been what we do at G. I mean, um, through our, uh, our, our Ripple score that was announced a couple of years ago, it's a, it's a metric that can show travelers how much of the money that they're spending with G Adventures is staying in destination. And as a company, we have a, a, an average ripple score of 93%, which just means you know, the vast majority of the money that's spent with G Adventures is going towards local suppliers, uh, local accommodation suppliers, local transportation suppliers, um, that just by going, you're having that positive economic benefit. And that was done by a third party. That's not us counting our own beans. That's uh, a third party organization coming in and auditing our entire supply chain. That took about five years to do. Um, so we, we have something called G for good and it's all the things that G adventures does in the background to ensure that just by going on vacation, you're, you're having a positive impact the, the ripple score, our responsible travel policies, our, our commitment to ensuring that, uh, that animals aren't in any way negatively impact from travelers visiting a place that we work respectfully and responsibly with indigenous communities and rural and remote communities around the world that we allow them to tell their stories in their way and that this idea of, of over tourism could also mean a, 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 um, you know, a, a large number of travelers coming to a very small space. It's not just Venice and uh, Barcelona and, and these places that have tens of thousands, millions of people visiting. You know, if you have uh, 20, 30 people every day arriving in a village that has mm. 20 or 30 people in it, that, that can impact that culture. Right. Uh, and then finally, our, our responsible travel policy around, um, around youth and children. We were the first international travel company to be certified as child safe last year by the child safe movement. Um, and all of that is kind of managed by Planetera, our nonprofit organization. And that's where we're proactive. We're able to engage with local communities, with individuals, with organizations, provide them with expertise and seed funding so that they can build and expand businesses that tap into the tourist economy. So that, you know, more of the, it, it's kind of, it, it's self-perpetuating. It's this loop tail. The more that you give, the, the more that you receive when, when you, you operate in this, this way as a business. And more and more, we see more and more companies realizing that this is something that they need to take into consideration when it comes to the way that they operate globally. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So I guess it's kind of a feel good travel when you travel with your adventures. Well, travel always feels good. Going to a different <laughs> destination, visiting the people, trying the food. Um, the right. goal for us is to allow people to that, that culturally immersive travel, right? Where you really feel like you're getting a sense for the place. Um, at G Adventures, the destination is the destination. We're not as so much focused on the amenities. You mentioned the different styles of travel, and that's, that's right. kind of where you can choose um, the, the level of comfort, the level of physical activity um, that, that's on your trip is, is through those different travel styles. But across all of them, the goal is to show you the wonders of that place, to get you out of the resort and, and into the real lives of the people um, to learn about their history and culture and food. And, and through that type of community tourism, everybody has benefited. The unique experiences that you get as a traveler that teaches you more about you, um, but also 
that cultural exchange, allowing the people in that destination to learn about your way of life and, and what it's like in Canada um, and to share what, what, what they have as well. So it's, yeah, it's, it's always exciting. Oh my God, I have so many questions for you, but um, the other question would be, um, is this a G Adventure 100% Canadian owned or even though, even though um, um, uh, Mr. Poon came from Calgary or? Yeah, so, um, so, so Bruce grew up in Calgary. He yeah, moved to Toronto. It is a wholly owned Canadian company. So our headquarters, Yay. our global headquarters is in, in Toronto, Basecamp. Nice. Um, so we don't, we don't call it the global headquarters. It's called Basecamp. It's, it's you yeah, know, yeah. the center of, of, of the G world. We do have lots of local offices, um, both local administration offices in a number of uh, regions, as well as smaller local offices that manage our, our local guides, our CEOs, our chief experience officers. Um, and, and operations there and it's key when you when you're traveling to different destinations around the world we need to have people on the ground to ensure yeah. safety um, and again making sure that we're able to uh, react and um, yeah provide all the essential services that our travelers will need in destination and manage those relationships with those suppliers so that when something like this happens uh, we can go in and make changes you know the, the, the changes that we need to see uh, on the, the cleaning schedules of our vehicles the changes that need to see as far as cleaning schedules in hotels, working with those smaller mom and pop providers um, to ensure that they're able to, to, to meet those needs and we can provide the resources and the training as well where necessary, if necessary, to, to keep everybody safe. It's, it's not just about the safety of our travelers. It's right, of course. essentially, it's the safety of the people in those destinations. Many places we operate, they don't have the kind of healthcare system that we have in Canada. And so it's, it's absolutely vital that we protect um, those those peoples, those communities, and in, in those rural and remote places as well, as much as protecting the health and safety of our travelers. Excellent, hundred percent Canadian, and a feel good travel and uh, sustainability, and helping Canadians feel good while traveling, and helping the, the local communities. I can see why you're all so excited talking about uh, the adventures. Um, I guess at that point now, I would like uh, Gary to kind of quickly share with us some of your travel files. And I think when people hear the word G Adventures, it's for active only uh, travel, go, go, go. Um, can I share with us, you know, is it what kind of um, uh, um, uh, niche market do you have? Or is it all age from zero to plus 100 years old? So if you can cover those, yeah, it would be great. I get that question quite a lot, right? It, we've got adventure in the name. So does that mean right. that I have to, you know, be sweating constantly and hiking up mountains? <laughs> and that's not what I want to do on my vacation. I want to have a vacation. Um, and absolutely, that's where the different travel styles come in. Um, you know, the adventure is pushing your comfort zone just a tiny bit. So um, what it, that, that could be taking a longer um, trip. It could be um, going to a place where, you know, th there isn't a lot of people who speak English. Um, it doesn't have to be um, a physical push. It can be any other type of, of um, kind of pushing off that comfort zone. And so uh, absolutely, if you want to hike Kilimanjaro, if you want to hike Machu Picchu, go to Everest Base Camp. We, we have the, the hard adventure, quote unquote. Um, but the vast majority of what we do is, is not that. It's the cultural immersion. It's the, um, you know, visiting Vietnam and um, spending time with a local artisan, seeing how she creates the, the, the traditional conical hats and learning about that process and, and trying it as well. It's about uh, that cultural immersion. And so um, that's across all our travel styles. Absolutely. If, I feel like if you want, I can pull up um, the G Adventures site. Yeah, and love to. We'd we'll love to see your logos and your styles. And, and, and if you can, please talk quickly about National Geographic's adventures too. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big one. So um, here you'll see the G Adventures website, gadventures.com. Um, absolutely, you can go and generate information and learn about G Adventures here. I highly recommend working with a local travel agent. We're all about supporting local businesses at G Adventures, and that can start with supporting your local travel agent. Mm -hmm. um, and so here you, you can find more information on our book with confidence and travel with confidence policies. If we go to travel styles, you'll see all of the different travel styles that are available. Um, I have a handy graphic that perhaps I'll share instead because it's going to be a little bit faster. There we go. So this is the travel styles that we have as an organization. So gadventures.com, you can search through these different styles of travel. It's um, we, we talk a lot about psychographics at G Adventures instead of demographics. So we do have a broad appeal uh, of, of different age ranges of people who want to travel with us. Everything from you know our 18 to 30 something trips that is is tailored towards those budget conscious backpackers who don't mind staying at hostels. Uh, but the vast majority of our travelers are um, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. They have a little bit more time. 
um, to go and, and spend in these different destinations. And uh, our classic travel style is by far the majority of what we do. It's a balance between included activities and free time to go and do your own thing. It's not on the bus, off the bus, on the bus, off the bus. It's not the way that we run our trips. We, we build in free time to give people the chance to explore at their own pace. The National Geographic Journeys is the most comfortable way of traveling with G's. So we do have a focus on upgraded accommodation, three to four star hotels, um, and then more educational content, often provided by National Geographic researchers in the field. So it's a picture of Jordan there that you see on the Nat Geo Journeys um, square. And so when you're in Jordan and you're visiting Petra, it is the National Geographic archaeologist who works at Petra, who shows travelers around that site our travelers around that site. So it's, it's cool to get the first hand information from the experts. Absolutely active trips, hiking, biking, kayaking, spending more time outside the vehicle uh, and, and in nature. But um, even these itineraries, it, it's, it's not all super strenuous. We have a, a level anywhere between one and five for how difficult our trips are. Um, a lot of level three trips are in that active travel style as well. Um, things like the Inca Trail uh, where you're at altitude would be a level four. And then, you know, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro would be a level five. We have marine itineraries. If you want to be on a small ship of eight passengers cruising through the, um, the Mediterranean and the islands of Greece or sailing through British Virgin Islands or, or um, you know, uh, in the Galapagos Islands on a ship of, of 16 passengers, we have these very small ships that operate all around the world, including our Antarctic expedition to, um, yeah, the G expedition that goes down to Antarctica and also the fjords of Norway in, in the other season. Wellness trips, trips to give you a chance to take a deep breath and relax, have cultural immersion, but balance it with interest, time for introspection and meditation and yoga. Um, local living trips where you can just slow down and live like a local in the, on the Amalfi Coast or in Croatia or in the, uh, the jungles of Ecuador. Um, rail journeys and then the Nat Geo Journeys family trips. So the chance to travel with children as young as seven, again, to offer them a different type of trip um, you know, classroom quality experiences in destinations around the world designed in partnership from the ground up with G Adventures and National Geographic. I, I love talking about the family journeys as well. Um, but that in a nutshell is, is, you know, all the different styles of travel. So the idea is there's a little something for pretty much everybody there. We're not a luxury travel supplier, but the Nat Geo tours and the wellness tours are extremely comfortable. And for those people who um, want to do more, more camping and, and hiking, then we have that available for them as well. This is excellent. Um, I would love to ask you, though, Gary, um, what was the trip that you went on that really touched you and uh, in a way that it's so memorable? And what did you see that you were able to, that Geo Adventure has given back on the journey that you went on? And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear about your experience. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky question because there's been a few, but the, the first trip that I took with G Adventures, it was a, um, a, like a, a training trip for the, the GPS team globally. So we all traveled to Peru and spent time there. And it's where I could see firsthand the positive impacts that our travelers have when they visit a destination. And it underscored for me that, you know, there's, there's, uh, it's very easy to put out marketing and have core values and talk about sustainability, but um, it's another thing to see it in action and to live it and to understand that this isn't just words that are used. This is the bedrock and foundation of the organization. And so, you know, I, I was living in Alberta. Uh, I, I applied for the role. I, I was flown to Toronto to take training. And then um, straight away, my first day, you know, do you have your passport up to date? Absolutely. Okay, good. Because in a month's time, you're going to Peru. Travel to Peru, um, you know, see the the just the the amazing amount of work that the, that the people in that region do, that the Quechua people in, in um, bringing the, the, our travelers from all over the world to their most sacred sites, to travel up to Machu Picchu, um, and to, to share with them uh, Christmas in the community. At, at G, we, we don't have Christmas parties. In Toronto, we'll um, uh, work with a local uh, um, outreach shelter to, to, to provide uh, gifts and, and food for, for uh, local kids so that they can have a Christmas as well. And we, we basically, Changed, transported that idea to Peru and held uh, a, a big event for all of our porters, our cooks, our guides in the region and their families so they could bring their kids out and just experience Christmas together in the community. And it was just oh. the most fantastic event. Um, and it just it really underscored the commitment of this company to looking after its people. 
Um, and, you know, it's kind of showing in practice what we say that we're going to do in, in principle, which was for me, yeah, a life changing experience. Wow. Excellent. It's so good. It's so good. And everyone says, man, it goes fast. And time has come. <laughs> what a great show. What great questions. Thank you so much. And that is the uh, Kate and Travel show with uh, Wendy Sung. And we've had uh, Gary Armstrong with G Adventures. Very enlightening, very intriguing. And I'm going to look up, look for more. So thank you, Wendy. Well, thank you, James. And thank you, Gary, again for our time. See you guys next week. Thanks so much at G Adventures for travel, for the opportunity to visit the far flung parts of the world that you've always dreamed of going and seeing, to have culturally immersive experiences in those destinations, to learn what life is like for the people in those places, to experience their culture, their food and their way of life, and bring back those positive experiences and changes so that they can work and impact your life here in Canada as well. So I uh, thank you so much for um, you know, tuning in to this, this, uh, this, this presentation. And if there's any more questions that you have about G Adventures, please contact your local uh, travel agent so that they can provide you with more information on, on, on everything that we're doing at G um, to, to be sustainable, but also to help mitigate, mitigate the risks and impacts of this current global health crisis. Thank you so much. Hi everybody, my name is Wendy Sung and I am the travel owner and specialist with Kate and Travel. And uh, what my company does is that we help people plan for their bucket list travel to the world. So with that said, um, I do anything from planning to helping you answer your questions. And uh, the best thing I do is basically match you with the right uh, uh, vacations to make sure that it's stress-free before you head out there. That's the best way to reach me is basically just Google me up. Uh, use the words Kate and Travel. K-A-Y-T-O-N Travel. You'll find me there. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Thanks.